There's a lot of hype around EVs and auto companies are doubling down on plans to roll out whole new fleets. But there's a problem. And as demand for lithium grows, it's pushing up prices. Prices rose nearly 500%. And experts say they're going to keep on climbing as demand outstrips supply. It takes a lot of capital to get a new mine online. And then once it's mined, it has to be processed. At the moment, there's only one up and running mine in the U.S., but there are plans for more. And given how important lithium is to our future, the White House has said it is vital that we develop a demand supply chain. Will auto and battery manufacturers vertically integrate to mine and process their battery materials as Ford did in the 1930s? RK Equity focuses exclusively on critical minerals projects in support of EV and battery producers in North America and Europe. These videos are based on several independent research notes which you can access on rkequity.com and is for information purposes only and not investment advice. This is Equity Overview with Rodney Hooper. Welcome to Rockstock Channel and our ongoing equity overview series focusing on individual critical raw materials companies that we think should benefit from the rising demand from electric vehicles, energy storage, and other clean energy technologies. In today's episode, Rodney Hooper and I will discuss the state of play at Piedmont Lithium, a company RK Equity has been an advisor to and has had equity interests in for five years since around the time of the company's inception in 2016. This video will be a bit longer than others in our equity overview series as Piedmont today is a three project company. Before we begin, we should note that we have not been paid to prepare this video and all my and Rodney's comments are our own independent opinions. Rodney and I are not financial advisors nor broker dealers. This video is for information purposes only and should not be considered investment or financial advice. Please do your own independent research and read the disclaimer at the end of this video or on RK Equity's website. If you like this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified as soon as new episodes are released. Please also leave a comment or question you may want to ask of Piedmont when we next interview management. I was approached in 2016 by Piedmont founder Tazo Arima soon after he had acquired 400 acres and 19 drill holes in North Carolina. I had worked with Tazo previously on his first $10 million to $1 billion resource play, Colspur, from 2009 to 2011, when he was just 27 years old. Tazo noted RK Equity's success working with Western Lithium, Lithium Americas, and in addition to seeking assistance in raising the profile for Piedmont, he thought I could be helpful in securing a CEO to move the project forward. Thankfully, the top candidate I approached during Piedmont's seed nine cent round decided the time was right for him to exit a highly successful investment banking career and build his own billion dollar resource developer. I've known and collaborated with Piedmont CEO Keith Phillips for nearly 20 years. In 2003, I took RK Equity's first client, Robert Friedland, to pitch Mongolia Copper to Keith and his team at Bear Stearns, now JP Morgan. It typically takes seven to 10 years to bring a lithium project into production. Lithium America's Kachari Olaroz and Thacker Pass projects are both in year 13. Keith has progressed Piedmont at warp speed over four years, taking the few drill holes and acreage he inherited into a world-class strategic resource of more than 44 million tons of pure spodumene in North Carolina. Resources in North Carolina used to account for nearly 100% of the world's lithium production. It is largely the reason that two of the world's most important lithium companies, Albemarle and Livent, have their headquarters and or substantial chemical operations in the state. Albemarle and Livent are two of Tesla's main lithium suppliers, hydroxide in particular. At Tesla's battery day last September, Elon Musk disclosed plans to build its own lithium hydroxide plant in Texas. Piedmont disclosed soon thereafter that it had signed an offtake with Tesla to supply spodumene from its Carolina lithium project. After raising $57 million at $25 per share in October 2020 after the Tesla announcement, Piedmont stock peaked last year around $89 in March, which coincided with a front page article in the Wall Street Journal profiling its founders. Piedmont raised a further $123 million at $70 per share soon thereafter, nearly three times higher than its prior raise just five months earlier. On RK Equity's March 31st, 2021 scoreboard, Piedmont ranked number two after Lithium Americas by market cap among pre-revenue developers. At that time, Lithium prices were averaging $10,000 a ton. 
Piedmont's profile consisted largely of a single project at pre-feasibility study that was 24% smaller by prospective lithium hydroxide production and 37% smaller in terms of resource than it is today. Piedmont's 1.1 billion market value last March represented 90% of its 1.2 billion NPV of that smaller Carolina lithium project. Today, as Rodney will argue, the market has derated Carolina lithium to just approximately 10% of its NPV. In other words, in a world where the dominant source of lithium supply for America and Europe's EVs are hard rock resources from Australia processed into chemicals in China, the United States' only spodumene resource and integrated hydroxide strategy is available almost for free. Last June, as lithium prices were rising, but lithium equities were trading sideways to down, I introduced the concept of higher love. Looking back to the last lithium bull market in 2016 to 2018 and using Oracobre, now Alchem, as a reference, we demonstrated the frequent 30 to 40% retracements that occurred before reaching higher highs. Commodity equities follow commodity prices, sometimes with a lag, we argued. Piedmont is down 45% from its March 2021 high. It has sunk to number 10 among pre-revenue developers as of the end of January. Meanwhile, during this 10-month period, the top 14 lithium developers above 400 million US market cap are up more than two and a half times on average. Piedmont's joint venture partner, Sayana, is up three and a half times since the end of March and more than 14 times since Piedmont invested at less than one cent per share last January. Five of these 14, all spodumene developers, hit all-time highs in January. Rockstock Channel flagged the extreme market tightness and spodumene speculation dynamic last September with our interview of Pilbara Minerals' Ken Brinsden. The others of the 14 hit 52-week or all-time highs sometime between September and November, but have since retraced 20 to 40 percent, despite the melt-up since then in lithium prices. I would not be surprised if many of these names hit higher highs in coming months. Tight lithium markets will be here for a while, and the lithium shortage narrative is in mainstream financial media daily. The latest article last week flagged Mercedes admitting that EV penetration rates may be delayed due to lagged raw material supply. Piedmont's primary listing is on NASDAQ and it maintains a secondary listing on the ASX, same ticker PLL. The share is relatively liquid, trading some $20 million per day across both exchanges. Piedmont is the only US domiciled, fully SEC registered lithium developer on ARCA Equity Scorecard. This is relevant as it enables PLL to be included in major US indices like the Russell 3000 and not just thematic ETFs like the Global X LIT for which PLL is already a constituent. I've written several research reports on Piedmont since 2019, most recently in November of last year. I've looked at Piedmont from a sum of parts and an EV EBITDA and also from the perspective of an auto battery or other strategic investor. Piedmont's Carolina Lithium project is projected to be one of the lowest cost vertically integrated hard rock to hydroxide projects globally. Based on a life cycle assessment from industry leader Minvaro, it also has the potential to be among the best in terms of carbon intensity, land footprint, water usage, and water scarcity metrics. Carolina Lithium is near shovel ready. It is approaching final investment decision subject to final permitting and full funding expected in the coming months. I believe Carolina's scarcity and sustainability attributes make it a strategic asset that could warrant a premium valuation for those seeking secure localized supply. Throughout 2021, Keith Phillips and his team transferred Piedmont from a single Carolina project developer into a multi-jurisdiction spodumen to lithium hydroxide business. In January, June and July, he took advantage of depressed lithium markets to secure advanced high quality spodumen assets at favorable prices from under the radar projects in Quebec and Ghana. P 
Piedmont's equity stake in Siona is up 14 times since first investment last January. Its equity stake in Atlantic has nearly doubled since last August. But it is Piedmont's project level interest and offtake rights in Atlantic's Ghana Spodumen portfolio and Siona's BT Spodumen assets in Quebec that is key. These assets more than doubles Piedmont's Spodumen capacity to 500,000 tons per annum. Piedmont announced plans last week to double its 30,000 ton production to a second 30,000 USA hydroxide plant for which Atlantic's Ghana portfolio would be the source. Piedmont further announced that together with Saona, it is planning a first half 2023 restart of North American lithium spodumen concentrate plant. This could bring cash flow to Piedmont much sooner than previously anticipated. Piedmont owns 100% of Carolina Lithium and is earning in to 50% interest and 50% offtake right in Atlantic Lithium's Ghana portfolio and has a 25% project interest and 50% offtake right to Siona's Quebec BT Lithium projects, including North American Lithium. In addition, Piedmont holds 9.9% equity in Atlantic Lithium and 16% equity in Siona. PLL's persistent stock price weakness and its failure to participate in any material rally over the past 10 months is an outlier relative to the market looking more, more generously at companies with equal, if not more challenging, technical, sovereign or permitting issues. As a result of Piedmont's highly accretive transactions, its balance sheet has risen to $217 million in cash and marketable securities up from $180 million it raised over the past 15 months. This cash balance compares favorably to the top 14 developers above 400 million US market caps and provides Piedmont substantial financial flexibility. Both the North American Lithium Brownfield restart and the Ghana Spodumen assets should have low capital intensities, quick payback periods and high IRRs. It is conceivable Piedmont may not need any new funding to get these mines into production. It appointed several senior operational hires, including COO David Kanecki, former head of Albemarle's industry-leading hard rock lithium business. It also submitted its permit application, published for Carolina Lithium, the DFS, showing economics have nearly doubled to more than $2 billion. Meanwhile, lithium chemical prices have gone parabolic, exceeding $50,000 a ton, up more than five times in the last 12 months. Lithium m and is accelerating. Prices for lithium assets are rising. In December, Rio Tinto bought technically challenged asset Rincon in Argentina for $825 million. In this context, Piedmont's three projects providing access to 500,000 tons of spodumen per year, enabling more than 60,000 ton hydroxide tons in the USA and additional spodumen and chemical production in Canada, could prove compelling to auto and battery OEMs. Bankers JP Morgan and Evercore are running a strategic funding process. Piedmont has also applied with the US Department of Energy Loan Projects Office for potential long-term low interest loan to finance its hydroxide chemical processing aspirations. I recently published a research note and video on Atlantic Lithium, which has steadily re-rated on AIM Atlantic currently trades at 285 million market cap, but based on peer comparables, Core, Lithium, and Sigma, as well as Siona, my fair value estimate is that Atlantic's Ghana Lithium portfolio could fetch around 800 million US for 100% given strategic interest in the sector. If I'm right, this would equate to 400 million for PLL's 50% interest before the deduction of CapEx. Taking Siona and Atlantic Lithium at their current market values, I estimate that Carolina Lithium is trading at just 200 million or 10% of the 2 billion NPV published in its December definitive feasibility study. If I'm right and Atlantic will continue to rise to my estimated fair value, then Carolina is trading around 60 million or only 3% of NPV. Another way to interpret this is that the market is essentially affixing a 90 to 97% probability that Carolina Lithium doesn't get permitted, financed, and built. Howard and my reading of the Gaston County tea leaf is much more optimistic than this, 
And if we're right, a 50 to 100% EV NPV for Carolina lithium would equate to 89 to $153 for PLL share price. Piedmont has a few more boxes to tick before final approvals for the Carolina lithium project. The state mining permit, which was submitted only five months ago in September, is well advanced through the process with several public hearings having taken place. No evident fatal flaw issues have been raised to date. Piedmont has engaged regularly and productively with all relevant local stakeholders explaining the project's low environmental impact and high economic and strategic priority for the county, state, and the country of its near $1 billion planned investment. A review of the Gaston County Commissioner's filings show a priority statement they enacted in 2013. As its first important guiding principle, the commissioners have identified job creation and economic development, emphasizing that it is their role as Gaston County Commissioners to make Gaston County attractive to businesses and, and jobs, and they will provide a business-friendly environment that encourages lower taxes and less regulations for growth and stability. Gaston County is the ninth largest county in North Carolina with 228,000 residents, but it ranks 33rd in terms of income per capita. In an economic impact statement presented to the commissioners last month, Piedmont outlined that its Carolina Lithium Project will create 428 permanent jobs with average compensation exceeding $82,000, more than 34% higher than Gaston County's approximately 61,000 average household income. And there would be substantial spillover effects for additional business as a result of developing their Carolina Lithium project. Since Piedmont's July 2021 public hearing, at which Keith Phillips and Piedmont General Manager Patrick Brindle presented the Carolina project to the Gaston County commissioners and residents for the first time, the main meaningful development has been the updating of the county ordinances, which contain provisions enabling lithium quarrying and mining as contemplated by Piedmont. In addition to Albemarle and Livent's existing chemical processing operations, North Carolina is very familiar with heavy industry, such as Martin Marietta, which operates two handfuls of aggregate mines throughout the state. It is also home to America's largest steelmaker, Nucor, and Honeywell, which just signed an agreement to buy 19 gigawatt hours of battery cells for energy storage applications produced by battery startup Frayer, is also headquartered in North Carolina. With Toyota building a $1 billion battery factory in North Carolina, and Ford and GM accelerating their EV plans and big battery joint ventures in nearby states with Korea's SK Innovation, and LG Energy Solutions, respectively, it is hard to imagine that these and or other players wouldn't see immense value in following Tesla's lead and locking in conventional USA lithium supply from Piedmont. The last few years have also seen many new entrants to the lithium space. From West Farmers to Sabanya to Chez to Schlumberger to Rio Tinto, we would not be surprised if another new entrant from Big Oil big mining, big utility, big chemical, or even big battery and big auto saw merit in entering the exciting lithium business through the only conventional spodumene project in the country. Piedmont share trading has migrated from the ASX to NASDAQ over the past 18 months. The company completely re-domiciled to Belmont, North Carolina. USA trading liquidity often results in premium valuations, but not always. We are currently in a moment where the ASX cost of lithium capital on balance is the best place to be globally, in my observation. Inflation and interest rate worries in the US have resulted in a significant selldown of risky tech in the United States, which has hit pre-revenue EV startups and SPACs hard. We believe US lithium stocks tied to this EV theme have been caught up in this sell-off. Just like the lithium developers, producers Albemarle and Livent are down 20 to 30% despite the melt up in lithium prices. We think this is unjustified and are expecting higher love to return to these blue chips, as well as many developers we referenced earlier. In my opinion, few institutions or retail investors have taken the time to understand what's really happening on the ground in Gaston County, nor have they understood the significant value accretion within Piedmont of its deals with Siona and Atlantic. Instead, 
Some inflammatory and misleading articles from last summer have continued to confuse investors and act as a headwind to PLL. For Piedmont to remain in the penalty box for this long, while the stock prices of other companies that have equal, if not more challenging, permitting sovereign or technical risk could be viewed as a market inefficiency. Taking another cut at the top 14 developers above 400 million market value, I've looked at what would the upside be for each if they hit their all-time highs. No surprise, Piedmont having fallen furthest would have the most upside, 80% if it reached last March high. More relevant though, is the market value at those all-time highs and where each stock could go from there. Piedmont at $89 would be 1.4 billion market value, which would be equivalent to 70% of its Carolina lithium project value alone ignoring the substantial value of its Atlantic and Siona economic interests. So it could go a lot further in a hot spodumene market. Those mines have high potential for near-term cash flow, low capital intensity, quick payback, and high IRRs, as Rodney mentioned. Piedmont has some 10 sell-side analysts covering its stock, but only Evercore to date has done the same some of the parts work Rodney has digging into Piedmont's accretive investments in Siona and Atlantic. Evercore's bull case is $150, three times up from today, which would equate to just 2.3 billion market value. On the flip side, Piedmont at current $49 is already trading at Evercore's bear case. 2022 should be a catalyst-rich year for Piedmont. The Carolina permitting question, now in month five, could be resolved as early as this spring or summer. Assuming lithium prices continue to remain strong and absent a continued risk-off derating of EV and growth equities generally, we believe PLL's risk-reward relative to other advanced lithium development stocks looks compelling. 